the comment that was made yesterday. Um, oh, nice ringtone. Um, I feel like people kind of took that out of context, and and I've been hearing that uh, I prefer JB over JT, and um, that's not that's not what that was. Um, I like to praise my teammates. I like to praise my teammates when they're playing well, and I feel like that's what um, I did my best to do. Um, when I got here, JT was the first person to text me. Um, I already know that. And both of them know how, much, how I feel about them, how I feel about them as players. But to compare them is something that I would never do because they're two completely different players, um, as well as being on the same team and the things that they've done in this organization and the things that they've done against, against me as an opponent. Um, I feel like how they play together and how they work together is something that uh, is sacred and something that can't be broken. So uh, just to address the comment yesterday, I do not prefer one or the other, I prefer both. Both of them are superstars, and it's being shown out here on, on the biggest stage in the world. Questions, please. First question in the back right. Champ Telunas, ABS EBN News. Uh, Drew, how were you able to shred Dallas's defense effectively, cutting to the basket majority of the game? And how do you feel when Kyrie gives up the ball when you guard him? Um, Again, I don't think I'm shredding the defense. Uh, I think it's more so JT and JB, um, especially tonight. JT was getting into the paint and being double teamed and making the right plays out of it and um, just finding me, um, you know, just either being in the dunker or being in the corner. Uh, he has that vision as a playmaker. So um, I, I would give that to them. Back left standing. Drew, uh, Kari Thompson, Boston Globe. The buzzer beater that Peyton hit, if he doesn't hit that, you guys are up six going into uh, the fourth. Just as someone with your defensive chops, what does that do to a defense when someone hits a shot like that at the end of a quarter? Well, first I fouled Kyrie and put him on the free throw line, and I got my third foul. So Peyton came in for me. So that's a uh, – no, I didn't want to foul him, but I'm kind of, kind of glad that I did. And uh, the energy that Peyton brings, um, him just having the balls to take that shot, and uh, he's done it so many times. Uh, this year where he's um, had had the courage to take it and he's knocked it in has been huge for us. So it was definitely a confidence boost and um, uh, really just boosted us for the, for the rest of that game. Shane, on your right. Shane, Shane on the Forbes. I'm just curious, you know, what, in your opinion, drives the closeness and togetherness of this group is part of it, the fact that everyone's had to sacrifice a little bit of something? Um, I think when you sacrifice together and you do something together, it brings you closer. Uh, I think being able to uh, go through wins and losses and to build something, it means a lot. So uh, when you go through things like that, uh, I think it makes you closer. And um, I think that that's what this team has done. Uh, from from 1 to 15, somebody sacrificed something. So uh, it's been great and the journey's been awesome. But uh, at the end of the day, the job's not done. Jake, over here on left. Drew, you were praising JT's ability to draw two and make the right read. When you're in the dunker going on the baseline, for him specifically compared to other ball handlers on your team, what are you reading about his handle and what he's doing to try to put yourself in the right position? I think just trying to get into space uh, and trying to uh, be in his vision. Uh, I know that sometimes when I drive and I might get stuck, uh, I need somebody to drift with me or to kind of be in space and be in my vision. So. I think for the most part, I just try to stay in front of him, um, give him a good outlet, and and he's been making great reads. On your right, fifth row in the aisle. Jeff Zilga at USA Today. Drew, I know lots of things probably factor into why a player is comfortable with a certain team, um, but I wanted to know maybe what influence Brad Stevens has had on you and with you and how you feel about playing in Boston and for the Celtics. Yeah, when I first got traded here, um, he was one, obviously one of the first people that I talked to, and <clears throat> I just think his positive nature. He has this, uh, he's kind of this kind soul, um, somebody who is, uh, has great energy about him. So um, every time that I talk to him and every time I see him, he's always been encouraging, and this has been from the beginning. So um, it's always nice to have somebody like that uh, uh, have your back and, um, again, somebody like that in your corner in your, in your organization. Dave on the left on third row. Drew, if, if Jalen and Jason are the superstars on this team, what's your role? And if you're going to be the team's leading scorer, leading rebounder, and shoot the highest percentage in game two of the finals, why aren't you a superstar as well? I'm a utility guy. I'll do whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here to win. I feel like they brought me here to win. 
um, and, and I'll do my best to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, this is, this is their team. And I know it's probably just as much as my team as theirs, but uh, again, I feel like I've talked about this before, the pressure that they have on themselves to execute and to be great is a little bit different than, than, than my pressure. Um, and again, I've always uh, been honest about that and how they always handle themselves has been something that's been so honorable. So um, it's, just, it's, it's slightly different. Um, they're superstars and, and I'm here to support. Rachel. Hey, Drew. Um, two games in to another NBA Finals. Uh, you were up 2-0 in that one also, but just very different teams. So I'm, I'm curious how this Finals experience so far has been different from your first one. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that one, we're actually down 2-0. That was slightly, slightly different. Uh, but I all think... All I remember it, is the win. Yeah, and that's, and, that, and that's all I, I remember, too. Is um, So I, I think it's a little different that... Uh, Again, a different team, different setting, different year. Um, definitely having COVID year, it, it was it was a bit weird. But um, I think being on this team, the uh, the journey to this point has been um, has been great. But we still know being up 2-0 means nothing. Um, job's not done, and we have to do whatever it takes. Has it felt a lot different from you though, being here a second time? Um, yeah, uh, I would say maybe I'm a bit more comfortable. You know, um, just knowing uh, kind of the pressure and uh, the atmosphere and um, obviously what's on the line. Uh, this is this is a bit different. Second row in the center. Drew, during one of those extended timeouts in the second quarter, it looked like you guys had a pretty tight huddle and a long huddle. Um, what conversations do you remember from that huddle in particular or what kind of conversations are players having with each other when the game is kind of going back and forth? Yeah, um, you know, in huddles like that, it's uh, it's intimate, and it's something that uh, we kind of hold close and, and, and dear to ourselves. So um, I think in times like that, encouraging each other, um, being able to police ourselves uh, in times like that when we might be doing something that uh, is uncharacteristic or even if we're doing something great, all those things are brought up in those moments uh, to where we can um, really just go out there and, and do our best to win the game. Chris over here on the left. Drew, you mentioned you're kind of brought here to win, and the guys have all seemingly kind of looked to you as the guy of the experience, the guy that, that knows what it takes. How have you, you know, embraced that role, and how has that role kind of manifested during you know, the finals here as well? Man, I, I love my teammates. Um, they've been here before. They've been here before, and they know what it takes and, and to, to get to this point. And, um, they've they've shown it. You've seen them in the Eastern Conference Finals, and you've seen them in the Finals before. Um, and we're all determined as a team. We all want this, and um, it's something that it's it's collective. So I'll, I won't say that I do much or I talk much. Um, I feel like I'm more of an action type of guy, uh, and I go out there and I play hard as I can and do whatever the team needs for for us to win. Last question on your right, second row. Drew, uh, Derek was in here and he said he was very grateful that you came in and, and sort of adapted the way you did because he said you could have come in here and said, I'm Drew Holiday, and he would have just sort of accepted that, that you were the all-star that was coming in. Um, was there a moment in the season where you felt that you guys as a team really clicked in terms of that chemistry, or was it just sort of natural from the start? Um, I think it was natural. I think that uh, they had chemistry and and some, some things I had to figure out. Um, but that just goes to show how great a teammates I have. Um, there's been times where I've struggled uh, kind of figuring out my place or what I wanted or what I need to do to help the team win. And Derek's been the person who has talked me through it. Um, I've been point guards on other teams and I've been uh, shooting guards on other teams, but, but Derek is our point guard and he's shown that the whole, the whole season. Um, but I would say that there are different times in the season where each guy has kind of come and talked to me about um, how they felt and, and how they saw the game and what I could do to help and all that. And that's helped me out tremendously uh, getting to this point. Thank you.